Right, stag fun. I'm having problems here um, with the passenger side rear axle um, on the um, customer stag. If I get myself into a position here, we can see. First of all, most, I think he's been quite lucky. Is that going to focus? No, it's on autofocus. Look at that. What do you reckon? I'm not sure I could tr trust that any further than I would throw it. A bit worried about having my hand under here right now. Drive shaft out of the way. Now, there's the output shaft. That's the noise I'm getting. So the prognosis is the differential. Something's gone badly wrong with the differential. It turns in a forward direction quite happily. In reverse, it is really tough to turn. Okay? We're in neutral on the gearbox. There's no reason why that should be tough. Diff came out of the car, relatively straightforward. Luckily it had a stainless exhaust, so I was able to tear that apart. Um, oddly enough, as the diff came out of the car, it started to behave. No problems at all. Oh, that's odd, I'm thinking. So I investigated, got the diff nose out as well. <clears throat> um, the only thing that I can really find, or the only thing that can justify this action, is that the oil that I drained out of the, uh, out of the differential, there's about two pints in there, is absolutely full of swarf. Little lumps of metal. Look at it all. And it's magnetic to focus. So I've got a plastic glove over the enemy probe magnet. There we are. Picks it all up. Swarf. Um, I don't know what's happened in there. Something fairly substantial's happened in there. There are big old lumps on there. Fairly big old lumps. So something's gone bang inside that differential. It's weird that it started to behave. Um, I'm going to tip it upside down in a minute. Um, I just want to get this bowl emptied and cleaned out first of all, get all the swarf out of it um, before I go on to the next stage. Right, so found cause of problem. I've got a planet gear here and it's probably got two, maybe three mil of play on it and there's all manner of swarf coming out from behind it. So it looks like whatever bush or bearing it was sitting on. You see that? Um, and the way I was able to identify that was by getting hold of both shafts with the um, differential, the, the front nose tight and we got it backwards and forwards and you can see how much that has there. The rest of these gears in here are relatively okay. There's quite a lot of wear on this gear though so it could be that it's been chonking around for a little while but that would not have meshed correctly um, yeah I think it's rebuild time for this one not going to bother putting any more effort into that whatsoever um, the reason I noticed this by the way is when I was turning it over gently rocking it backwards and forwards something dropped down from there and when I started rocking it backwards and forwards again I noticed this gear in fact you can see swarf all in here as well if you can't focus on it that's a big lump of swarf there in fact there's a big chip on the gear there probably where the gear has not meshed properly yeah I'd say that's pretty catastrophic there's supposed to be um, a shim up here on the cross pin that stops that from moving up and down it's supposed to have a certain amount of inflow I don't imagine the inflow is supposed to be two mil this thing also this is the crack <laughs> for now that I saw on the diff when it was on the car yesterday. This welded joint, the seam down here at the bottom, is to hold the tube onto the cross beam. Tube, one solid piece, cross beam, goes right the way through, joins up the two subframe arms. What happens is, on some older stacks, is that joint cracks and then it breaks off and then the diff nose will come out. But normally they crack up here, in fact, that has cracked up there as well, look. Look at the state of it. That's cracked in two different planes. That's not good, is it? So today, back onto paid work. Um, let me just get past this drive shaft. This diff nose has gone back in again. And you can see what they've basically done is, I can get ugly to tie, they've welded 
tubes or threaded bars or whatever from the flange that the diff bolts to to the uh, the cage here. Um, quite a nice job actually. That came from Faversham Classics. Easy enough to bolt in. Four bolts hold it in, plus then four nuts and bolts hold the prop shaft. And that's all in place now. Um, it's got a machined quill shaft, so we know the quill shaft is straight and true. And it's got a new bearing in it. All right, so that's that. Get out front of this car now. Whee! And then the diff came from TD Fitchett. It's been fully refurbed. Um, it's a 3.7 ratio, which is good. Comes fitted with a drain plug. Oh yes, um, and there's the filler plug there. Um, I'm going to bolt the um, the mounting plate on the back of it. Now I gave this a treatment yesterday, um, and then when it's all on the car, I'm going to give it a Dynex. So it's had a rush converter. When it's all up on the car, because I really didn't fancy getting sticky, I'm just going to spray Dynex all over it and get it lubed up. Um, first, I need to. Fit new studs, nuts, and lock plates to hold this um, mounting plate on the back. Yes, and I'll also check that this uh, plate here opens before I go any further. Yeah, nice diff that. Feels nice and tight. So we can get a uh, an action shot. Can't really. God, that is mega. Gosh, look <laughs> how much slot was in the other one. Nice. Comes with a year's guarantee. You didn't see any of that, but you can hear my commentary getting all excited about it. Comes with a year's guarantee. Um, irrelevant of mileage. These things are quite important on these diffs. It's jiggle pin. Just make sure that that doesn't get all covered up in gloop and crap, because what ends up happening is as the temperature inside the diff increases and the oil expands it just blows it past the front oil seal which then washes it up uh, oil out of the sealed seal on the oh, oh, on the um, on the diff nose extension and they're back to square one so jiggle pin is actually quite important it's like the little jiggle pin you get in the uh, moisture tray in the back of your fridge the one you probably don't know about the reason why your fridge keeps flooding Right, I might just put a bit of Dynex on this side of this thing before I bolt it up. Um, just around the mounting plate. Um, I've got to find a way of um, protecting my car because I really don't want shit all over my car. Right, let's get this thing bolted up and then I shall uh, assemble it. Basically, when you put it in, put a trolley jack underneath it, present the nose up to the uh, opening on the diff nose, push it forwards, jack it all into place, chase after the bit of paper that's blowing all over Steve's front car. A bit breezy today. Um, yeah, and then once it's attached at the front of the diff nose, put the mountings on the back, holds it all into place, do the four bolts up around the front. And that's the diff then in place. And then all you need to do then is to attach the uh, the drive shafts. They're nicely machined too. I'll tell you what, <laughs> the clonk is just going to move now to his drive shafts, which is shot, but they're serviceable. They're not shot. The diff was shot. Right.